Hi. Today we're saying goodbye to Kawaii Shrek. It was good knowing you. We had a good run, buddy. But it's time to move on. I'll miss you. This video brought to you courtesy of my middle finger on my other hand who decided to break. I guess this is the limit of how long I can grow my natural nails before they become too weak. I never ended up doing my other hand, but here's how they look after two-ish weeks. Anyways, let's prep for a new design by first filing off the colored layer. I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a previous video, but I always paint at least two layers of clear polish before any design. This is for a smoother surface, but also to protect my natural nails because removing gel polish can be very damaging. So what I do is file off the colored layer and stop when I reach the clear layer. That way I don't over file my natural nails by accident and I skip the step of using harsh chemicals to remove it altogether. Next, I'll be cutting all my nails to match the length of the broken one and filing it into something between an oval and an almond shape. They look close enough that I can't tell which one's which sometimes, so you can decide for yourself. I almost always do this shape because 1. it's the most comfortable for me, 2. I like the look of it, and 3. it's the most aerodynamic. I applied some sunscreen focusing it on the back of my hands and fingers. After rubbing that in, I lightly filed the surface of my nails with a 240 grit. And then I wiped the dust and leftover sunscreen off my nails with a tissue soaked in isopropyl alcohol. I would usually do my cuticles around this step, but I completely forgot about them, so I went straight into applying the two layers of clear gel polish as I mentioned before. And that's all for the prep work! For the application, I like using the silicone tray to lay down my colors and also to mix on. Since I'm doing a gradient, I'll also be using this Squoval nail brush. The shape is also called a filbert. A little cup for isopropyl alcohol, a mixing tool, dotting tool, needle, and of course my gel polishes and nail lamp. This set is inspired by the cherry blossoms at High Park, which is located in downtown Toronto for all of you that aren't familiar with it. Oh, and here's me and my boyfriend. But we're internet shy, so here's us as blob people <laughs> with the cherry blossoms in the background. I'm going to start with this milky white as my bottom layer and cure it for 30 seconds. I don't know what happened to the footage, but I mixed a light pink and I'm going to apply that from the bottom to the halfway point. After curing that, I mixed a more vibrant pink and applied it to the bottom third of my nails. After wiping off the excess from my brush, I blended it upwards for a seamless gradient. I cured it for another 30 seconds and reapplied the same pink I mixed earlier. I placed this one on the bottom fourth of my nails and repeated the step earlier of blending it upwards. I like how the gradient is looking so I'll stop here and move on to the next step. I put down a glob of white gel polish and used my dotting tool to draw five petals evenly spaced apart. I tried a few variations and methods of the petal shape but ended up choosing the simplest version which you'll see me do on my index finger. I made sure to have at least one, maximum two large flowers on each nail and placed a couple medium to small complementary flowers around for visual interest and to create a compositional flow. Let's fast forward my other fingers and I'll show you how I did the center of the sakura flower on my thumb. After a bit of trial and error, I found out it looked the best when I applied the center in two parts. The first one will be with this thin nail brush where I created a radial gradient. And then I cure it and go in with a needle. I'll dot some dark red in the center and drag it outwards. After fixing that up a bit, I'll cure it under my nail lamp for 30 seconds and apply a clear coat to all my nails. Since this is the last step, I'll let everything cure for 60 seconds this time, and voila, they're done. Here's what they look like in natural lighting against some lilacs, because most of the cherry blossoms have already fallen off by the time I'm posting this video.
I also did the light pink gradient on my other hand, but left them as plain white flowers. I don't know if anyone will know what I'm talking about, but it kind of looks like those pink and white bags of sushi rice. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to see what artistic endeavors I tackle next time. I'll be posting videos every other week for a while until I have more time on my hands, so I'll see you guys again on June 9th or 10th. Until then, comment what kind of keycaps I should make in my next video or just anything you want to see me make. Thank you, bye!